Hello and welcome to another video where I'll be testing out the new Luma AI Unreal Engine 5.2 plugin. Now I'll be doing a more detailed rundown on nerfs in general, including Luma AI and several other apps in the coming days. But for, I thought I would show you this because yesterday they announced a new plugin for version 5.2 with some samples. I'm going to quickly show you how to get up and running here. I'm using the web version of lumalabs.ai. You can also use the iPhone version. Now I have this data set of a chair that I have shown in other videos. Now this was uh, just over 60 iPhone 12 Pro photos. Now I zipped these up and uploaded them here under the Create New. This one, I think, took about two hours to upload. And once that's there, I can download it in a variety of formats. In this interface, it will allow you to look at it cropped, standalone, or as a video. You can also do some cropping here. And you can view the quality of the mesh, which is probably the most important thing for me. Now to the Unreal plugin. If you click the download button here, you will see a reference to an Unreal plugin here. You can also download these other formats and I will go over this in another video, but for now we're just gonna go straight to the Unreal plugin that allows you to drag in Nerf files. Now we're going to look at the 5.2 plugin and it gives you a useful template here. And it gives you some project settings you might need to change if you wanna bring them into your own projects. I'm going to download the Film Starter project. And once you have that project, you just need to unzip it. And we can just go right ahead and click the Film Starter project. At this stage, you'll have to wait for some shaders to compile, as is compulsory with an opening an Unreal project for the first time. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to have a quick look at the sample scenes. Although on closer inspection, we can see that it's failed on some of these narrow parts. This bit's come through okay, but this would require some cleanup to make it work fully. There's bits of hanging geometry there. My suggestion would be to download it as a mesh and edit it, and you can see how to do that in some of my previous videos. I'm going to download the Luma file. Right, this has finished compiling shaders. I can move around here without pressing play, just using WASD, and I can inspect some of the detail here. There's some crazy stuff happening with these textures here. But it seems to be running pretty smooth, pretty fast on my machine. I don't know how much labor went into creating this particular nerve, how many images or what cameras were used, but the plugin seems to be quite efficient. Let's see if I can drag in one of mine. And according to this, you can just drag in a Luma file straight in. So I'm just gonna try and do that now by downloading my chair and dragging that into the content browser. Now if I press control and space to bring up my content browser, I'll see a bunch of blueprints here and these are relevant to whether using baked light or light or real time light. And I'm not going to use the background. So there, I'm just gonna drag that in. There we have that chair, let's press play and see. So there's a chair in front of a castle. Now, as the documentation says, there is no collision here, and we'll test this in a moment in the game template they've provided. So I'm just gonna go back to this and download the game template as well. Now, the game starter pack, once that's up and running, I press play, there's no character here either, so I'd probably have to add one. And as there's no collisions in here, I'm probably gonna add something else to the scene here. So I'm just gonna delete this drawbridge and bring in one of the other files that they have, one of the other Luma files that are on here. This, Loom, this playground file and literally just drag that into my content browser again. 
I'm going to go with this dynamic file, drag that in, find my player start here, press F to focus on that and bring that down into my scene. Now with this one being quite flat, I should be able to create a collision here. And now what I've done is just gone in here and added a feature or content pack and chosen third person character and added that to my project. Once I do this, I can choose third person game mode from world settings. And when I press play, I should have a character that falls right through it because there is no collision. So we can add our own collision here. And also what I'm going to do is just bring in a character as a reference for the height. So I'm just going to search for BP third here and just drag that in and just see, because what I've noticed is these don't usually come in to scale these Luma files. So as you can see, the character is a lot bigger than the playground here. So what I'm going to do is just get the playground file and just scale that up. That probably looks a bit better, scaled it up to five. Maybe a little bit bigger than that still. Let's try 6.5. That probably looks a bit more acceptable. And then what I'm going to do is just put in my own collision here. So with this I could put in a blocking volume or a mesh and make it invisible, something like that. Let's start off with a blocking volume. And I'm just going to scale this over to about 20. And just change the perspective and put that blocking volume right under my character here. So when I press play now, there I am in the playground. Now clearly this blocking volume isn't correct for this scene because it isn't completely flat. This is an issue for using these for game, I would have thought. You need collisions. For that you would need the, the mesh as far as I understand it. Anyhow, that is a it's a very quick and easy way to get started into using Luma Nerfs. Look out for one of my future videos where I will do a comparison to other uh, common techniques for bringing geometry into your game. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and I will see you soon.